Hey, welcome back to Mobility Wad. This is Kelly Starrett. Want to talk to you about one of my favorite activities, which is living on the hill. Alpine skiing, snowboarding, backcountry. Um, I grew up in southern Germany. Hot dog was like uh, it was like an anthem for me. And I'm not gonna not gonna lie. I lived in Garmisch as a kid, and I always cheered on for Rudy Garmisch. Who doesn't cheer on for Rudy Garmisch? I feel like he gets a bad bad rep. If you don't get the hot dog analogy. That's some homework. So what we want to do is, is talk about one of the biggest errors I see in winter sports, and that's specifically how to get prepped for the day on the hill. Oftentimes what we see, unlike almost every other action sport, um, let's say you are cold in the morning, early when you get up, you uh, have some coffee, you stuff yourself into the car, you, maybe you've warmed up your boots, and maybe if you're a pro you have warm boots, you put yourself into these foot coffins and then walk up to the hill and try to get prepped as you sit on the chairlift and then your first set of turns doesn't make sense so built into the structure of the day around the activity of either snowboarding or skiing is the fact that you're going to do lots of periods of sitting and I'm going to be cold and not have a good chance to prep now I try to talk my kids into walking as far as we can to the uh, hill and how does that go every time not good. Not good. Why? Because walking in ski boots sucks. Walking with your gear sucks. So what ends up happening is we end up really close and then we're back into this problem of seeing sort of these type 1 errors built into the sport. So here's what I'm, pro I'm proposing. I'm proposing that you give me 10 minutes in the morning while you're drinking your coffee to get prepped. We're going to call this a spin-up, a um, big mountain spin-up. And the idea here is let's get our body into some of the positions. Let's get the hips working. Let's get some tissues perfused, get the feet recovered from yesterday so that once you're on the slope, guess what? Everything kind of goes a little bit better. So here's what we're going to We're going to set some guidelines. One, 10 minutes is all it's going to take. Jared on the camera, I'm, I'm my local uh, ski shop, Start House. These are my guys, and uh, he'll tell me once we enter this when, when the 10 minute clock is up. So I'm asking just for 10 minutes. At our place, we have an infrared sauna. I'm in there in the morning before I ski because the deep pen training heat seems to make this old Cape Buffalo ski a little bit better. But if you don't have a sauna, don't worry, we can build a plenty of heat. Now, a couple ideas. You're going to need a jump rope. Even a piece of rope will work, but get yourself a jump rope. Amazon Prime will get it there in two days. You need a $10 jump rope or $4 jump, it doesn't matter. The jump rope will, it would measure if you stood it on a string, it would kind of touch you in the armpit. Again, it doesn't matter so much because we're gonna use it just to prep. But you need a jump rope. Now, the other key piece here during this is that the mistake that we see is that people aren't drinking any water while they're getting prepped. They basically are slugging some coffee, true fact, and then they go to the slope and, they, and it's one of those weird weird sports where you might be out at high altitude or highish altitude all day in the cold and only drink intermittently, right? Do you ski with us with a bladder, Jared? Because you're a pro. But a lot of people don't. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, hey, look, I can't control my hydration necessarily on the hill well, so I'm going to try to drink 12 to 18 ounces of water before I leave the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm, just, I'm there's no where we're going to treat dehydration as a clinical problem, right? I'm clinically dehydrated. We're going to say that you're hypohydrated. Why? Because your kidneys are kicking on over time, trying to catch up with the altitude. You may be drinking beer, you're drinking coffee, right? And you're just probably behind on total fluid load. That makes tissues sort of less resilient, right? And it makes your cardiac output decrease. So. Here's the here's the trick though. You're gonna take 12, 18 ounces of water. We're gonna drink this while we're warming up. In addition to whatever coffee you're drinking, or tea, or decaf, herbal soy chai latte, whatever it is you drink, you you new generation kids. And the idea here is though, I want you to add a pinch of sea salt. So whatever you're drinking, pinch of sea salt to that, and you're gonna absorb that water. And that way, what you're gonna find is that you probably will pee if you need to go, and you won't have to pee up there. But your body's gonna be hydrated before we start. Okay, so here's where we're gonna start. We're going to start with a couple, we call this the 200. So we're not going to do any fancy jumping, but i got to get myself up and prepped. So what I'm going to do is toes together, butt squeezed. That's my cue, and I'm just going to jump straight up and down easily for 100 reps, just like this. So what's happening in this jumping is I'm starting to get blood into the motion. I'm starting, I'm starting to wake up my nervous system. I'm getting my butt to work, and I'm starting to wake up my feet. Most of us aren't using our feet very much before we cram them in and then their feet are stiff and not perfused and, and it's, a, it's sort of a disaster. So what I want to do is just get a hundred easy turns. And again, the keys here are my toes are together, my butt is squeezed, and I'm just going straight up and down in a very lazy way. Whoa, let me see if I can actually jump rope by hitting some up top. So just really simple, give me a hundred easy jumps. 
Now during this, we're also going to be working on priming our mechanical ventilation system. So we're going to work on getting as big a breath in as we can, doing all these mobilizations to get the diaphragm working, get the rib cage working. Because it turns out skiing is an aerobic sport. True fact, right? So while I'm jump roping, it looks like this. And the job is to get as much air into as I can as I do that 100 skips. Break it up any way you need. Now, once we've done 100, we're going to be a little bit more fancy and we're going to go 50 left, 50 right. So it looks like this. And by the way, this is our standard warm up with all our teams, all our little kids, et cetera, et cetera. What we're trying to do is get the foot to work, the nervous system to work, everything warmed up. So I just go left foot for 50. I'm working on my breathing. Then I go 50 on the right foot. And what you find is that quick 200 can be done in less than a minute. Now I'm awake and now I'm a little bit warm and I can have the next conversation. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my shoes off here so you can see my arches. Now what I want you to understand is that during these warm-ups, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna try to maintain a neutral foot. So if we look at my ankle, my ankle is stacked right in the middle of my foot. Now, my ankles are inside my feet, and now they're on the outside of my feet. So during all the motions that we're gonna do, we're gonna try to keep the ankle right in the middle of the foot. So here's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna come down to a squat, just to see how everything's feeling. Notice that the only thing I'm gonna to try to maintain is the integrity of my foot. So I'm gonna keep that foot engaged. Now, if you have to turn the feet out, that's okay, but I'd rather you get the foot straight and then spend time in a slightly different position. So our base shape, I've just put the knee here, I'm taking the knee through full range of motion, I'm maintaining my arch, and I'm just gonna kind of change shapes here for a second. What I'm trying to do is close my hip down and sort of feel how I'm feeling. Next, we're gonna step forward into this, basically a one-legged squat position, maintain the arch here, and I'm gonna put my hand on my foot, and what I'm gonna do is keeping the shin vertical, I'm just gonna to try to open up my hip a little bit. Now, if this is too tough a position for you, you're probably not skiing already, <laughs> you're doing something else, but don't be afraid to put this on an elevated platform like a chair. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend just a couple minutes here, or a couple chunks of time here, noodling back and forth. My hand stays on my foot, I'm just gonna open up, I'm gonna make some circles with the foot, and then I'm gonna wiggle a little bit, then I'm gonna take a big breath, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna contract and try to hold myself up on that one foot for five seconds, release. And then I'm gonna take two breaths as I wiggle. So we're gonna see a pattern. I contract, I hold for five seconds, I wiggle and take two breaths. So while I'm here, I'm telling my nervous system, lungs, hips, I'm gonna breathe. Then I'm gonna find a new place, take a breath, hold, Resist for five seconds, hold, release, two breaths. So I'm gonna do a minimum of three rounds sort of per shape. So what that does is that gets me about five seconds on, one breath, two, set, two breaths off and wiggling is 15 seconds. That's kind of 30 to 45 seconds moving per position. Now what I'm gonna do is make this a little bit more interesting now. I'm gonna bring my knee to my belly button. So all I did was just shift over, I'm holding my hand down, keeping my arch, foot is straight, just like it would be if I was on a ski boot. And I'm gonna do the same wiggling now, but now I'm gonna start to add a little rotation. So I'm gonna put my elbow on the ground if I can, and wiggle, wiggle for five seconds, resist, hold, release, two breaths. I can look at the knee and start to get a little rotation this way. Again, wiggle a little bit. Once you start to get the hang of this, you'll be able to find your own dark patches. Take a breath, hold, resist, five seconds, release. Wiggle a little bit more, take two breaths. And then let's go ahead and push away, break up with your leg like it disgusts you. Disgusting. Take a big breath, like people who don't finish their turns. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, ride it, don't slide it, bro. I hate that. So uh, again, this end range, hold, resist, push hard, release. Get a little movement. Then I'm gonna switch feet here. I'm just gonna take my time, come up, and I'm gonna repeat the same process. So you're doing a follow along with me, here we go. So I'm just noodling around here, right? Feeling where I'm tight. Oh, that's a corner that feels tight. The only rule is maintain a vertical shin, keep the foot arch engaged, be, in, be curious. Oh, so stiff, take a big breath. Hold, resist. 
release, noodle a little bit. What ends up happening during that contract is we're telling our brain we're responsible for this position. We're simultaneously telling stiff musculature, tight musculature to relax. Breathing tells me that my brain, that this is a position that I own. So big breath in, big breath out. And I'm gonna repeat that process two or three times per this foot. Then I'm gonna shift over and do the same thing. This shifting over is trying to get this foot a little bit more to midline, like I'm starting to turn, foot is coming, I'm just doing a big right hand turn here. Again, we're gonna just noodle a little bit. So noodle, take a big breath, hold, resist, release, two breaths. Let's repeat, let's go ahead and turn, do the same thing. Look away, do the same thing. Elbows on the ground, the same thing. What you're gonna find is that what you're doing is we're spending a lot of time getting the hip prepped for our basic squeeze position, right? Which is being able to drop straight down, maintain this position, and get the hips to be able to function. Okay, so now we're gonna open up the back of the hips. And I'm gonna do this in the same position. So left foot goes forward, right foot back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze my butt, flex my quad, get my torso upright, then relax. So I flex my quad, squeeze my butt, torso upright, take a big breath, hold, release, come on down, noodle around for that back hip, take a big breath, quad goes on, butt engaged, hold, release, get a little noodle, and this time I'm noodling with my foot off the ground. I'll repeat both sides here, again, foot is straight, Vertical shin, lift the quad, flex the quad, lift the leg, squeeze the butt, get the leg as straight as you can, then lift the chest, take a breath, try to breathe into your hip, hold, release, and then a little bit more noodling around in this shape. Repeat that again, two or three breath cycles, one breath hold, two breaths off, in this exaggerated lunge position, just opening up the hip. What we find is that in all of these athletic shapes that we're in, anterior hips gets a little bit short. Okay, so now, We've spent some time on the ground, maybe four or five minutes. We've done some jump roping. We're starting to come alive. So here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna add in what we call the 27 squats. So feet are straight. Only rule is don't collapse your arches. Stay in the best range that's available for you. So now we're gonna try to get the blood moving, hips working in a variety of positions. So foot straight. I do one squat. Take a breath. Stand back up. I turn the feet out, so I'm just turned 30 degrees or less. Think about a really over-exaggerated snowboard position here. Don't let your arches collapse. One squat, take a breath. <gasps> then I'm gonna turn the feet in. Now I'm forcing my ankle to have full range of motion. I'm gonna let my knees drift out. One squat down, take a breath. <sighs> Stand back up, then it gets crazy. I start to look like a telemark skier, which I did for 15 years. And so I just do a split stance, same width, split stance, and I repeat the process. I squat down, feet straight, keep the arches engaged. One breath, stand back up, feet out. One squat, then a breath, stand back up. Feet come in, one squat. It's gonna be ugly and feel weird, and you might only squat this fine, that's fine. Don't let your arch collapse, one breath. Left foot forward. See a pattern? One squat, breath. Turn the feet out, give me one squat, one breath. Turn the feet in, one squat, one breath, chest up. Then I stand up. Now I'm gonna, that's nine squats. Now I'm gonna repeat the pattern wide. So now I'm as wide as I can, or reasonable. Keep the arches engaged, hold down, foot up, knees out, chest up, one breath. Stand up, feet out, one breath. Feet come in. One squat, one breath, then wide, foot forward. Try to take my hips into these end ranges, do a little work here. I'm starting to build a sweat. One squat, one breath, one squat, one breath. Feet come in, one squat, one breath. Now, left foot wide. One squat, one breath, turn the feet out. One squat, one breath, feet in, one squat, one breath, and then I've completed the wide cycle. And now I'm gonna finish close. Get my ankles working. This is what it looks like. Feet are straight. I squat down. One squat, one breath. <gasps> or as far as I can. Feet out. If this is as far as I can, that's okay. One squat, one breath. 
Toes in. One squat, one breath. Oh. Get my shins warmed up. Then look, right foot forward. Like a tidy little telly turn, right? One squat, one breath. Out, one squat, one breath. In, one squat, one breath. Tandem, one squat, one breath, left foot forward. Turn out. Turn in. And what you see is that we've just done 27 squats. I've got a little sweat going. Hips are engaged and working. And now, anything else I wanna do is on me. But I guarantee you, we're at over 10 minutes of actual work. Try that as a prep. See how your first run goes on the hill. Guarantee you, blow your mind at how much better you ski, how much better you ride, and how much better you are tomorrow. Start house, thanks very much. I love my guys ahead. See you guys tomorrow.